What's up, everybody? A spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Stationeers. Uh, when we left off in the last episode, we were trying to do hydroponics, which I kind of have it set up a little bit better, but it's still not really great because um, I'm not sure how to compensate for the temperature. Okay, I, I'm not a big um, physics or atmospherics person. I like the concept, but I'm not really good at it. So if I say this incorrectly, please don't take offense or be mad or whatever. But basically what's happening is whatever gas the plants are giving off, which I believe should be some combination of CO2 and stuff, um, it's coming off really, really hot. And so when I heat the room up to the point that the plants don't die, but then they give off the gas, then it's like, it's basically like pumping it back into the room or something. It's like heating up the room a lot. And so then everything dies. So I'm having a little bit of a difficulty with that. However, there is some good news. As you can see, I've made some changes to the base. I have my bench set up here for making food. I just don't have the plants really growing yet um, to, to, you know, grow sad food. But, uh, you might notice this guy over here is not the stupid, crazy, weird numbers that we had before. So, turns out there was a crazy, stupid, simple way to do what I was trying to do. You remember when I had mentioned before, there's got to be an easier way to do this because this is a ridiculous way to get power or a power reading. I was right. There is a way more simple way to do it, and I found it on... Uh, I wish I could remember whose YouTube channel I was watching. I think it was... Uh, there's a couple of people that have been doing a lot with Stationeers, or at least I keep running across their videos. Um, I don't think it was Grey Duster. I think it was... Nathan's something? I forget. Anyways, he did a logic circuit thing that was way more simplistic... And it blew my mind and was like, why did I not see this before? So I will go over that really quickly. However, there is a modification that I've made to mine that I'll also explain in a second. Um, I really wish this wasn't in my way, but whatever. So essentially, there's this um, thing called a ratio on the batteries, the station batteries or the stationary battery, whatever. Um, stationary battery. So the ratio is basically their power percentage. So what you would all, all you would really need to do, and this is a little bit complicated in the way that uh, Stationeers does its stuff. It's not particularly complex. It shouldn't really be this complicated, but it kind of is. So if I can get in here, uh, there's a switch, which you've seen me use over there for my, um, uh, my vent system. But you can do a switch, you can do a dial, you can do a button or a lever. And what you do to set this up is you would put the switch down and with the screwdriver you would set it to, I think, have two options. Like this is max of one, it's set to zero, and I think you would set this to two. And when you hook this to a logic writer, you can set... Um, the LED, uh, which I guess is what is set for, LED station power percent. So you would set it to this, but instead of setting, you would set this to mode. And when you set this to mode, and then put the dial on the input, uh, you can adjust the dial and it switches the mode. And I believe the second mode, aka in this one, you would turn it to one, I think. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I haven't... I think that's how we did it. I think that's how I did it. Um, when you do it that way, it'll set the mode to a percentage um, to or to take in the number as a percent. It'll show the little percent sign and all that. Um, and then when you set the logic reader to ratio, it'll be uh, the ratio is actually coming out as a percentage. Now you will notice that I don't actually have this hooked up. You don't need to. You have the dial set up, you plug it in, you set the mode, and then you can remove the dial and plug in the logic reader to the writer and set the ratio, blah, 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 blah. And that's all you would really need. So you really need a dial, one writer, one reader. That's it. You set the dial, you set the mode on the writer. Once it's set, then you go into the reader, 
and and rewire them to where that goes into the writer. Hope that makes sense. I'm trying to not be real complicated with it um, and take too long on it. Now you might notice, well, you've got a bunch of other stuff going on. Well, that's because I did some stuff since the last episode. In particular, I added a whole nother set of solar panels and another battery to the up top because I was, I was running out of power. So what you're actually seeing here is the sum of my two batteries power. Uh, as you can see, this is at 47, this is at 55. So both of these are set to ratios for the different batteries. So this is stationary battery two, this is one. So the first one's at 47, the second one's at 56. And then what I'm doing is, I believe, this is ratio, this is ratio. So I'm taking in the two values from these two, from the two batteries, the, the percentage from the two batteries, and we're adding them together. And that gives you the total percentage of power, but you'll get stuff like, uh, what are we at? Like this would equate to 107%, which is not really accurate because I'm wanting the total power and that wouldn't go over 100. So then what you do is you'll feed this one into what I believe is this guy. I think. And we've got the sum chip going into here. We've got the number of solar panels, which is this guy. Uh, I actually named that wrong. That shouldn't be solar panels. That should actually be number of batteries, not solar panels. So ignore that name. That's actually the number of batteries you have. I need to redo that at some point. Um, and then you divide it. So you would divide the sum of the power by the number of batteries you have, and then this value is now going into the input and writing it to that. So in total, between the two batteries, this is 51, this is 61, we'd have a total of 57% of the total capacity both batteries could have. Um, so that's why mine looks a little more complicated, uh, but not. But if you were just doing it the way we did it before, where you had a single battery and you were just looking for that one, all you would need is a reader, a writer, and a sw uh, switch set to the dial. That's all you'd need. And so I was very kind of like blown away as far as like, uh, yeah, that's way more simplistic than what I was doing. Um, so yeah, I was just gonna run out here real quick and show you guys what it looks like. So this is the new setup. Um, I need to make more green paint and paint this. Whoa, okay. Every now and again, there's still something in this game that when you're like standing on a cable and you jump, you just go flying. Uh, so yeah, we ran the heavy duty cable through the middle and that's for the power. I actually rotated these to face each other so I only needed one set of heavy duty cable for the power and then ran the cheaper cable for the data further out. Um, now I'd have to change this a bit if I did another row of two, um, I think I would have to probably bring this heavy cable out here and then run that down the middle. I, that would probably be the cheapest. And then I've got heavy duty set to the data and the power for this one. And then that goes down into the base. Now I did have to finagle this a little bit because I didn't realize at first I put them too close. And so when I put them too close, I couldn't actually get to the switch on this guy. Uh, so what I ended up having to do, man, I hate how floaty you are sometimes. So what I ended up having to do was I ran the data cable to this and I connected that temporarily to a, um, a logic writer or a reader or something or both. I forget how I set it up, but basically I got the value of the, um, the power, the, the power setting and used my, switch that I just showed you guys I was using as the dial and I set that up to be the value for the on off trigger for that button uh, for that battery and so that's how I turned it on remotely because I didn't want to actually move it I liked it where it was but I couldn't actually turn it on and so that was kind of an inconvenience because I was like what is going on why is my battery not working um, turns out you have to plug it in and turn it on so yeah that's where we're at at this point so our power is way better. I've got three more generators and one more capacitor basically. So, you know, I'm storing more power and I'm generating more power. So that's really cool. Um, now I'm sure there's an inefficiency at some point when the sun is at like this 
like horizontal angle because one set of panels is only going to be getting most of the sun. So I'm sure there's probably a more efficient way to do it, but because they're rotating and stuff, eventually they'll hit a point where neither of them are real, or one one set's getting more than the other. But as you can see, we're, we're cranking pretty good, and I'm leaving the lights and stuff on. I also removed a couple of these machines. I removed the, um, the pipe bender and the electronic, uh, what'd you call it? Electronics printer. Um, and the solid generator. I forgot what this doohickey was over here, and then I'm like, solid, I haven't used that hardly at all since I got solar panels. So, because I did that because I realized the fabricator actually does everything. Um, the electronics printer is faster with stuff like cable, but as far as a one-size-fits-all machine, the fabricator does everything, so there really wasn't a lot of point in having all my materials spread out everywhere. Um, and this is what we need for doing... Um, making food from the hydroponics. So the way this works, in case anyone isn't aware, I didn't show this before, is um, these two things are actually loose. And this was another thing that I found out from watching, um, again, I really wish I could remember who it was I was watching, but it's the same one that I saw that did this stuff. Um, and I was watching about their food processing setup. And so I kind of watched them do it, which saved me some time because, um, I'm not sure how long it would take me to figure this out. But when you turn this on and off, it doesn't do anything and there's no spot for a battery. But they're loose, kind of like the beacon. Where did that beacon go, anyway? Should have... There it is. So it's kind of like dropping the beacon, but that has a spot for a battery. So it was kind of like, well, what the heck are you supposed to do with this? Um, and that's where this bench comes in. So the bench... In case, again, in case anybody hasn't seen this before, the bench is wired up, same way as everything else with the data and the, um, yeah, the data and the power cable. So this is what actually gets power, and you can see it glows as opposed to these that they don't. And so what I found out through watching videos that you actually have to do with these is drop them like hit the Q button and drop them on the bench. And when they're on the bench and you hold it with a wrench, you'll see connect. When you connect it, it snaps into place. The little power cable goes in there and it's now connected. And when you do that for both, you can do it for just one, but you'll need them both. Um, so when you do it for that, now when you turn this on, it'll still stay like that. But then when you turn... Okay, something got screwed up here. Ooh, ooh. What did I do? Okay, you work. I messed something up here. <laughs> let's re eh, let's redo this. Oh wait. Okay. So now do that. Wait. Connect. Okay. Now I turn that on. Uh oh. I did something. Something broke. All right, let's try this again. That switch works. Turn this on. That's not working. Turn that on. I don't understand what I did wrong here. Something's not talking to this correctly. That should be working too. Hmm. Cannot interact with this device as it is not powered. Well, that's interesting. Since it did it a second ago. Oh, now it works. Wait, what are you doing? What are you crafting? Crafting unknown. Okay, that's weird. But you won't turn on. Oh! There we go. Maybe it won't turn on because there's nothing in it. Maybe it's not broken. Weird. Anyways. So that's how that works, and in case you didn't already know, the reagent processor is where I could, I only have so many of these so I don't want to use them, but I could take like wheat um, and throw that in here where it says output, put it in there, close that, you turn this on with this on, and it would turn it into something. An example of wheat, it would turn it into flour. And then once you have enough flour, you can put the flour in here and other ingredients that you need, turn this on, and then you get... Um, whatever it is that that would make. So that's how you would actually make food. Unfortunately for us, we need to actually get 
you know, like, I don't know, the plants growing correctly. Now, I did test this out, and this does work, so I can close this. Um, I'm not actually sure if I showed you guys this or not. I showed you the plan, and the plan pretty much works as it's supposed to. This system uh, ties into here. This is through a pipe, and it's tied in over here to vent it back into this room because this is my primary. It's got the filtration room and all that. This is going to vent back into this vent uh, for keeping this atmosphere the way that it's supposed to be. So when we close this... This is set to outward. We'll turn this on. It'll vent the room and flood everything back into there, as you can see. Um, and then we'll turn this off. This is kind of a manual airlock, essentially. And so now we have nothing in here, but when we open this, we'll get the pressure that's built up in here. So you can see there's 16, 17-ish kPa, and it's about 20 degrees Celsius. Um, and so now we could put stuff in here, and in theory, it would grow. Like I said though, unfortunately we're running into a bit of an issue where when it grows, the gas that comes off of it is just really hot. The only thing I can think of would be to turn this on and vent some of that heat into there, but when I do that, it's gonna mess with this whole system and it could end up breaking the plants and stuff, so I'm not really sure how this is gonna work. And when we're done with this room and we're closed here, we can turn this on, it floods it back into there. And we're left with this. Now, there is one other thing. You can see it's really, really, really super cold in here. It's like negative 22 degrees. I did build a wall heater in here. And I tied it into um, this power line right here. So that's part of what prompted me to get um, an improved power unit is because we were using up a lot of power and this thing is kind of a power hog. Um, we'll probably need more, really, to do it effectively, but as you can see, it's actually doing pretty decent. Um, like, in this specific area, it's ticking down fairly well. But I, uh, in all the builds I've seen that utilizes uh, a wall heater or something, they usually have quite a few of them. Um, but our power draw is significantly increased with this thing. So... Not sure how that's going to work. There's also a cooler, I think, which we might want to build for this in here. I just don't think it's going to be able to cool it fast enough. Though it is a small room, so it is theoretically possible. Um, not really sure. And we are at night at the moment, I think. So using the fabricator and stuff will probably drain on our stuff. So I need... I'm not sure what it's considered. It should be like a wall heater or a wall cooler or something. So there should I should be looking for W. I think wall cooler. There we go. So it turns out I actually have everything that I need for that, which is good. I haven't I did a couple of mining runs in between the last episode. I didn't do a lot of them. Um but I'm not really sure what the best way is. I've seen a lot of YouTubers and stuff doing stuff on Stationers that they're just, like, ridiculously... Um, uh, they have, like, huge builds and stuff, and I'm kind of like, heh? Like, how do we pull that off? Now, what is this? This has it set up with a pipe and put if I'm seeing that correctly. I don't think the wall heater needed a pipe. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder how this is going to work. So if I was going to... Hmm. Okay. Okay. I think I have an idea on how we can do this. Okay, so I did a couple of things. We're almost out of daylight, so I don't know if this is going to work or not. I've saved it, so if it doesn't, it's whatever. Um, as you can tell here, this is... I'm not really sure how this is supposed to work, to be honest. Um, it doesn't have a through pipe, so I'm not really sure why you have to have a pipe for this. But whatever. Uh, we're going to vent this. I think the sun is going down somewhere so i'm not sure how this i'm not sure if this is going to actually work or not um our current atmosphere 
is 19. Okay, I wanted to see the pipe though. We have like 400 kPa. The video I saw used like 22 mPa, so I don't think we have enough water, but it might. Um, let's just try one. So this says it has no sunlight. Everything else seems to be fine. It's not worried about cold and it's not worried about water. That's the two, that's like the three things that you need is sunlight, water, and um, essentially if it's too cold or too hot. And you can see that the temperature is going up even though there's no, um, even though there's no, whatchamacallit, sunlight that's hitting it. So this might be a decent time to test this out. So it's not doing too bad, but it's kind of fighting it a little bit. And it's still kind of ticking up past what it can do. Um, let's see what we got going on here. So it's still mostly CO2. Um, and the weird part is this pipe I'm not quite sure how this pipe works, to be honest. Like, do I need to turn this guy on to get the pipe to cool off, maybe? That's kind of what it looks like. So, I don't know that I'm reading this right. But if I'm reading this correctly... Well, maybe it is, because what I'm thinking is it's either pulling in air, funneling it through the pipe, and then pushing it back out, or you have to pull something into the pipe, it cools it off, and then it pushes it back, or it pushes it back out through here. I'm not really sure how this works, because when I leave it off, it's just not doing anything. When I leave it on, it's kind of fighting back and forth, and when I turn the vent on, then it cooled it way down. So I'm not entirely sure how this is actually supposed to work. Um, and it also seems like it'll take some time to get it properly balanced. Um, like to where this can run, and the other thing can run, and they're back and forth, and it's not like getting too cold, not getting too hot kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how to do this correctly, but I'd like to see what happens when we get another ray of sunshine going through. Let's go ahead and close this. Uh, we'll turn you on. This should flood that back into there. Wait a minute. What is it doing? I'm wondering if because this is connected to the same thing, if it's just caught in a circle loop now at this point. Huh. Because in theory, this should be pumping back into there, but our external pressure is not changing. And that's just cooling it off. I think we might have a pipe loop going on here, which is not ideal. So I don't think this is going to work in this setup right now. Um, I'm going to leave it though, and before we end the episode or whatever, I'm going to show you guys what the temperature thing does when the sun comes up. All right, so I basically just reloaded that real quick because I wanted to show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, so if we just plant this down, uh, there is a thirst thing going on because I don't have the, I forgot to set up the pipe before I made this save. So the pipe is not, oops, wrong button. Uh, you can see that it's only two kilopascals, so that's not enough. Um, well, fiddlesticks, it's not doing, it's not growing correctly because of the water thing. All right, let me fix that. Alrighty, so we have a little bit of daylight left. I think we're going to try this again, um, just so you guys can see the temperature difference. Uh, I think this will be enough. So you can see we have daylight, we have sunlight, <laughs> same thing. We have the water in here now, and it, you can see that it's actually like in here. There's nothing wrong with it. It's it's fine. But you can check the temperature though, and the longer this grows, it just keeps on a climbing, which is fine up until about I think it's 50 degrees, 
Celsius, I think. And when it hits 50, it does not go well for the plants. The plants end up kind of like dying. Um, and I think for an exaggerated effect, I'm just going to throw all these down. I have a save here, so we're not going to actually do this, but I wanted you guys to see what happens when all these start growing at once. Check the temps out. Do, 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 like it just keeps on a trucking and it does not end up really slowing down much. So, uh, like I said, this is not working correctly that it's not properly venting this room like an airlock would. I guess I need this like in here somewhere, the cooler part. Um, I don't know if just turning this on and recycling the air will do anything. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. Um, but as you can see, it gets really hot in here. Um, now, I, I am kind of curious as to what the actual blend is in here. So it's mostly CO2, there's a little bit of oxygen, and a very small amount of nitrogen. Uh, but it's mostly oxygen and carbon dioxide. Mostly carbon dioxide, which makes sense because that's what plants give off. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to better regulate the temperature in here. Uh, hence why I was trying to do the wall cooler. But if I use this, it needs to be set up differently somehow. I don't know how to properly set it up, but it definitely is not working the way that we need it to work in order to just cool things off. Now, one thing I'm curious about, since I'm going to reload this anyway, I want to see what happens if I try and run this without a pipe connected to it. Yeah. So it needs a pipe. For some reason, it needs a pipe. So I got to figure out how that works, because that's not... I thought it would work like the wall heater in there that doesn't need a pipe, and you would just place it down, and it would just cool the air, and I'd leave the door open. But yeah, you can see it's almost up to 50, and when it hits 51-2-ish, somewhere in there, uh, the plants start dying. Now, I don't know... I could, I guess, just vent this into here... Um, but if I do that, then I've got to re-blend everything every time, so I don't really think that'll work very well. Um, yeah, and see, at this point, it was about 52, and then they start wilting. So this won't really work at the moment. I still need to balance out the, um, yeah, I still need to balance out the stuff. Now, just out of curiosity, let's see what happens if I kick this on, and we kick this on. So it's basically just venting around itself. And it still looks like it's climbing, so one cooler isn't really enough to combat the amount of heat these put off, for whatever reason. Um, I guess it's just the temperature of the gas, essentially. So if you have any thoughts on that, do let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to do one last thing before we wrap up this episode, I think. Alright, so total change of pace. Totally not what we've been working on. I am making some stairs. And you might go, why are you making stairs? Because I will show you why I'm making stairs. By the way, I really don't know where these extra iron panels came from. I kind of feel like I'm, I'm missing something somewhere that doesn't have its panels. I know I have this guy that goes in here. Um... But I don't really know where all these iron panels came from. Now, in case you were wondering, I did make a save before I did all this because I only have so many wheat and I don't really know of a way to get more of it. Um, so I didn't want to waste them. But I am making stairs for out here because every freaking time I go to get in my base, I have to turn my jetpack on and hop around like a bunny rabbit because I can't ever get on this stupid cube. I jump, and I jump, and I float, and I jump, and I miss, and then I every once in a while I'll get it, and then I don't, and I'm sick of it. So, we are going to make some stairs. Um, this probably works the best, honestly, so let's just put it there, uh, because that gives us access over here, and when we come back we can just, oh, it's so nice! It's so nice! It's the little things in life, man. Um... Now, just for the heck of it, I'm going to clear out some of this, make it a little bit more level, um, just so, yeah, it's even easier because I'm lazy and I don't want to waste jetpack fuel trying to get in my base.
So there we go. You have no idea how long I've been thinking about doing that and just have yet to do it. So I'm very happy about the addition of stairs to my base. Um, a little annoyed at this right here. I might even go ahead and fix this too because it's still a little bit tall. That's more than I meant to do. I'm trying to cut out this dip here. It kind of like dips down. I'm trying to level it out. It's not leveling very well. It just keeps going further down. Um, this is one of those projects that apparently is just never going to end. It's just going to keep going. So I probably should stop tearing more stuff down. There. At least that's doable. Sure. Uh, let's just... Man, it's it's so touchy. Like I'm trying not to build a trench. I just wanted to level this out a little bit, but it just keeps digging a trench. Anyways, that's good enough. Um, nope, wrong buttons. Buttons are a thing. So yeah, uh, I really wanted to do that for a long time because I'm so sick and tired of trying to jump onto that stupid block. And I don't think I showed this, uh, but I do have a pressure regulator over here set to 10,000 kPa because I did the math on Google and I think 1,000 kPa is 1 MPa, not mole, but like megapascal, like the bigger one, uh, capital M. And the video I saw on doing the hydroponics setup, I think used a, if I remember correctly, it was like 20 MPa or 22 or something. I don't know if that's crazy or not. It seems to be working, um, other than the, the heat that it's giving off. But, um, so yeah. That's, that's kind of why I set it up that way. It won't go any higher than that, so everything seems to be fine with like 500. It doesn't really seem to need that much. Um, in truth, I don't think I'm anywhere near that much. I think the water in that pipe is like... Man, I want to say it's something like 500 kPa or something. So... Um, I don't even know if it needs that much, and I might turn it down eventually. It's using all the water that I have in the pipe system right now. So um, I might want to turn that down before adding more water into the system. But yeah, so overall, not doing too shabby. We've got our little wall heater here set up. We've got our fabricator. Our bench is ready for food whenever we can get food. Um, got more batteries, more solar panels. All that's pretty good. Um, eventually we'll get our room heated up to where it's not so cold in here but yeah I'm, I'm the biggest thing is let me know what you guys hydroponics setup is if you have one if you're playing along and stuff and and have done stuff because i've got un, i kind of understand everything so far we've got the water we've got the co2 room we've got the temperature balanced out but once the plants start growing i cannot seem to stop them from putting off so much heat and so let me know what you guys think as far as uh, what the best way to combat that may be. And in the meantime, I think we're going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.